what our feeling was was that the spindle was just simply in the wrong spot. So we started looking at it and then it occurred to us that even just standing there looking at the machines we could see serious geometry variations and we kind of started to put some, some things together. We thought the easiest way to approach this was move the position of the weight on the skis forward and so what that would do is um, just basically change the weight distribution on the snow. The weight is centralized. It's so compact right here that you know we have the motor, the fuel tank, everything and it's all in one compact little bundle. Where the spindle was relative to that weight and the density of that weight seemed to be an issue to us. I've always imagined you know, pretend you're in a push-up position. If you have your hands directly underneath your chest and you're doing a push-up, a lot of the weight of your body is going to be directly on your hands. Versus if you slide your hands forward, maybe closer to your head, then it transfers more of the weight back onto your feet, which is touching the ground. So in a sense, that we, that's what we've done with the snowmobile. We haven't really changed the balance of the machine. So if you hung it, the center of balance and relative to the rider, all of that stuff is pretty much the same on a stock nitro with our amps. But what we've done is when the snowmobile is sitting on the ground, we've changed how the track impacts the ground versus the skis. For me, I was just kind of on this whole project to a certain extent, I've kind of been viewing it more than you know, actually developing a lot of these metal products. That's been a unique experience because when we go out west, I can, you know, instead of being somebody that knows what should happen, I've been able to just kind of see what is actually happening. We wanted to explore our theory a little bit more. And so, what we did was we got a set of A-arms off of a Nitro MTX and uh, we just hacked them all up and uh, we moved the spindle about four and a half inches forward. It was really just a, an effort to try to satisfy our curiosity of what we thought was wrong with a Nitro and why a Nitro was just miserable to ride in the mountains. We took a stock set of A-arms, we cut them, we bent them, um, and we kind of spliced in new pieces just to get them to, to be close to what we were after. And we threw them on a machine and we, uh, we went out west and we rode it. It was sort of a weird experience actually because we went out and rode it and we knew that we had a lot of significant changes I think, but we ended up getting back in the truck and we couldn't explain any of the differences. We, we knew that we had a drastic change um, with what we did, um, but it was hard to put it to words. You know, when we started getting the arms dialed in, there, it wasn't something that you just, you know, got on and you knew right away, you were like, this is different. We, you know, we kind of looked at it and we were, trying to still figure out what what had changed and did we make it better and when once we realized that it didn't have that unpredictable nature of you know kicking you off to either side or diving that was that, that made a huge difference We came back here and we, we made a more thorough set of prototypes. We fixtured it up, we went to chromoly tube with a lot closer to what we thought we would end up with, with a really, you know, everything just more right on and, and then we went back out west and rode it again.
we came to a lot more conclusions after that, after that second ride. And anyway, it's, it's really, you know, this process, we just stepped our way through it over a period of time where we, we wanted to make sure that what we thought we had was actually authentic and that it was making a difference on the nitro and it was addressing the issues of you know the the nitro has a tendency to to be just miserable in in off camber scenarios and and it, it likes to dive and dart and be just erratic beyond the specifics of the actual handling or how it's perceived most nitro owners would agree that overall you kind of lacked a confidence in the machine you know you just didn't know what it was going to do and it made it difficult because that that lack of confidence got instilled in you so it didn't really seem to matter where you were at you just you know you didn't feel like you could pull out of a situation if you had to and so you stayed away from certain areas and all that and when we redesigned the arms and we started riding the first few rides the first four or five rides um, the first couple hundred miles on, on the snowmobile with these arms, we had to like regain that confidence and it took a little bit because we were having to put ourselves in situations that you normally wouldn't put yourself in with a nitro and then see what it was going to do. Uh, maybe you had, you know, you were side hilling and slid into a tree well and the machine, you know, the snowmobile, kind of the skis sat flat on the snow and you were kind of in an off camber situation. Well, normally you'd probably pull the machine back, but starting from that spot would be really difficult with the stock setup because, you know, you weren't sure if you could pull it completely up into a side hill or the back end would wash it in the tree while you'd get stuck. So we were trying to get into those situations and see what the arms were going to do. I realized that something was different. I was watching, I was watching Jake come down a. Jake was on this, the green machine, and he, he was coming down a hill, and he turned into, it was a pretty steep slope, and he turned into the hill and, you know, pulled it into a side hill, but instead of side hilling down or the nitro rolling back onto itself, he just, he, he just held that sled there and did, just did a downhill slide straight on, you know, right on the, the uh, side of the nitro, MTX and then he took off uphill again. I had never I had never seen a nitro do things like that. So it was exciting and we knew that at that point I think we knew that there was definitely something different. What our our approach to the nitro was was really a, a mountain riding issue for us to begin with. We wanted to make a nitro handle like a an M series or a pro ride. We wanted to see a nitro being able to do those things in the mountains. The side hilling, the downhill turns, the you know, a lot of that crazy riding. We felt and we believed that we could make changes to a nitro that would, would bring it very, very close, at least to a, a somewhat of a competitive nature to what those snowmobiles are. I just stuck my foot out, planted that thing and that, I mean, that sled, it's just, you, you, you know, you, weren't, you wouldn't experience some of the stuff that you did without the front end and some of those changes because it, it'll just, it would just nicely lean over, it pivoted on that turn, and I just had my foot way out there still, and I just rolled that thing on a dime and side hill right out of there. We compared a, our nitro with our new A-arms, styling and we rode a nitro that had stock arms and that's where you really saw the difference. Really quickly all the same feelings that we had with a stock nitro came right back. It was uncomfortable, it was unpredictable. And then we were having other people ride them too besides us so that we could confirm you know not just us but what we thought other people who are ride, nitro riders what they would think of it. We're in the crazy mountains and we were in the we are in the Yellowstone area in Taylor Fork. We were in Alpine, Wyoming, riding with Dan Adams in Next Level Clinics. And, and all of this time, we had nitros out there that were um, using these front ends. Once you were on a nitro with the new spindle location, it was, it was a night and day difference to a stock nitro. And that's when 
we really knew that we had something. We decided that, that based on our findings and what we thought with the front end and what we were arriving at, that we would, we would produce them. This white set that's on the snowmill right now is a third generation design of the A-Arms. It's a 40 inch ski stance. Uh, you can see up here that the upper mounting is split. It's not one solid tube, which we ended up changing on the production set of A-Arms. So now you have the final production set of A-Arms. You can see that this, this tube goes front to back um, it's braced upper and lower. It, uh, it's thick wall chromoly tube, machined ends. These are uh, chromoly heim joint ends. So it's a very durable design. What we realized right away was moving the spindle farther forward, we'd have to make sure that the shock had a spherical bearing. That kind of means that it has to be an aftermarket shock. Stock Fox floats on a Yamaha Nitro do not have spherical bearings. When we moved the A-arm further forward, it no longer, the bolt running through the shock was no longer parallel to the, the machine hole that was in there. So it has to be able to, to pivot in that position. We were testing what we wanted to use for shocks, shock length, and we just, we kept stepping through even more. This is the float R Evol. It's got the extra volume chamber in it. Uh, it does have the rebound, so it, you can do a lot with the shock. You, it's perfect for the mountains. It's lightweight. It does everything that you'd want it to. What we realized is that it gives us a lot of the control that we were looking for. You want the shock to feel plush, but at the same time it has to have some rigidity to it. And so, you know, adjusting that extra volume chamber versus adjusting the main chamber gives you lots of options. We were very impressed with the shock. It works really well. Um, it comes with the spherical bearings. It really is a very good fit. Now there are other shocks that will fit with this. As long as the shock is 17 and a half inches in length and it has the same travel as a stock shock and then it has the spherical bearings, it'll work on here no problem. We do use the OEM spindles on, with the A-arm so we do not offer a, uh, a spindle. Using the spindle, we check the negative and positive camber gains. We also check bump steer to make sure that there was no bump steer. There is another benefit with the way that we've adjusted the, the A-arm. The lower shock mount now travels in line with the upper shock mount. On a stock set of A-arms, the, the lower shock mount actually travels up and behind the upper shock mount. It's not a big issue, but there is some binding conflict there. So by moving it forward now, it travels exactly in line.